Good evening and welcome to another edition of Grown Folks Business. Um, just want to say uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be in this space and so glad to share the time with the people who participate here, who watch. Um, it's very important. When I take a week off or, you know, we miss a show, it's, it's always a moment of like, man, I, I didn't talk to somebody I used to talk to this, this week. Um, and I know that rotates, but it's, it's just people in the square. So, um, Bob, Lisa, thanks again for uh, hanging out. Um, this is this is all I need. I, you know, we need to call this the FLB show or something, and put the D with the exclamation point of the end for Danya. Um, appreciate what you do, bro. Um, so we are uh, missing some of the usual suspects, and I know it's summertime. Some people are traveling. Some people are taking full advantage of this extra extra long day that we now have. Um, so more the merrier in that department, but uh. We also welcome you back when uh, it gets a little darker, a little sooner. But I'm glad to see uh, you guys, and I'm glad to share the space and time again. Uh, tonight's topic and question and all that good stuff, which I think is it's just going to be more of a conversation uh, based on how I observe certain things. And I know I'm not uh, alone in my observances. Otherwise, I would be alone in this space. So, um not that we all in agreement, but we understand that it's something that's worthy of our attention. So tonight is uh, the topic question is uh, why does fame and fortune fortune equal worth and validation? Um, of course, that's uh, kind of a moving target. Not everybody gets it. But when I say worth and validation, I mean just the attention that is garnered when a celebrity or an a known person uh, in the media that's not necessarily of the media has an opinion, thought, idea, or something they share, and it gets so much attention um, that it becomes worthy of discussion or debate. And it's like sometimes we forget that fame and fortune doesn't mean that you're not a person anymore. You still can say dumb stuff. Or you can still say uh, things that are misappropriated and uh, all of that good stuff. So, it, you know, I have a number of clips I want to show to kind of do what I do here in this space. And that's uh, crystallize my point so we can have a conversation about it. Uh, Meryl, glad you can slide in. I have a, quite a few clips, so I'm going to run them through uh, all at the same time. They are in the realm of. Uh, the question in terms of the fame and fortune equal worth and validation because these things that I'm about to string together got media attention. Um, but we can, we can, you know, we can scrutinize and we can use our, our brains to unpack why sometimes it seems intentional that we don't really go where we should on certain topics or unpack things as they make sense to the common folk as opposed to the uh, fame, those that are entitled, or, or not entitled, but have uh, ascended to the realm of fame and fortune. So I um, want to run like four clips. Uh, there are a couple of minutes each, and one of them is actually, I'm just going to play a portion of it because it's kind of long. And then on the other side of this thing, we'll come back. And, you know, you can just begin with the first question and be thinking about it. You already saw what the topic was. You probably thought about it for a day or so now. But why does fame and fortune equal worth and validation? So I'm going to share my screen and play a couple of clips. And then we'll come right back. You obviously you have it. President Johnson put out a couple things the last couple of days that you drew some attention. I'm curious from your perspective, just like how do you balance you, you want to have your voice, you want to have to say things versus how could it play out out here? Anything that I ever say or write, I'd be comfortable saying or write in front of everybody that I work with, players and coaches. So uh, I express myself as, as an American. You know, we have that ability. I love this country. And, um, you know, I believe what I believe and I I've said what I want to say and Every now and then there's some people that um, get offended by it. Uh, 
it's a slow news cycle. So I guess uh, Mike Florio picked something up yesterday and talked about it. It's not the first time Mike and I have disagreed about things. That's okay. Um, you know, but um, it's, that's pretty much it. There's not, not a whole lot to it. But what I am excited about is what's going on right now with us and, and the way we're working. You know? So football questions, uh, be where I'd like to focus. If anybody else wants to talk about other things, we can set something out at, an, at another time. That's kind of how I, how I see it. <laughs> Just for clarification, <laughs> why is it not important to you, like if your players are concerned by, by what you said? Oh, if they are and, and they want to talk about it, I'd talk about it with anybody. Yeah, no problem. I, at any time. But... Uh, but they're not. I'm just expressing myself. And uh, I think we all as Americans have the right to express ourselves, especially if you're being respectful. I'm being respectful. I just asked a simple question. Really, did I? Did, let's get right down, down to it. What did I ask? A simple question. Why are we not looking into those things? We're going to talk about it. Why are we not looking into those things? Because it's kind of hard for me to say I can realistically look at it i see the images on tv people's livelihoods are being destroyed businesses are being burned down no problem and then we have a dust up at the capitol there's no, nothing burned down and we're not going to talk about we're going to make that a major deal i just think it kind of two standards and if we apply the same standard and we're going to be reasonable with each other let's have a discussion that's all it was let's have a discussion we're Americans. Let's talk it through. I'm for I'm for us, you know, having a great opportunity to have a fulfilled life. Uh, like I said, every way, every which way I can. When I'm here, it's about love and respect. I love my guys. I respect my guys. Uh, but I also love the fact that I'm an American, and that means I'm free to express myself, and I'm not afraid to do that. <laughs> for pledging one million dollars to Planned Parenthood. That's right. During the 2022 BET Awards Sunday night, many celebrities chose to use their time on stage to speak out against the Supreme Court's recent decisions to overturn Roe v. Wade and expand gun rights, including the night's host, Taraji P. Henson. It's about damn time we talk about the fact that guns have more rights than a woman. It's a sad day in America. Singer Janelle Monet also had a bold message for the Supreme Court. In a world that tries to control and police our bodies, my body, and our decisions, my decisions. The Supreme Court. <laughs> Female rapper Lotto got emotional while accepting her award for best new artist. It's, oh my God. It's giving pro-choice. It's never giving a man police in my body. And best female R&B or pop artist Jasmine Sullivan used her acceptance speech to speak directly to the men watching. If you've ever benefited from a woman making one of the toughest decisions of her life, which is to terminate a pregnancy, you need to be standing with us. This is not just a woman's issue. This is everybody's issue. Matthew McConaughey is speaking out following the shooting in his hometown of Uval, Texas, that killed at least 19 children and two teachers. The 52-year-old actor took to Instagram on Tuesday night to address the tragedy that hit so close to home for him, writing, As all of you are aware, there was another mass shooting today, this time in my hometown of Uval, Texas. Once again, we have tragically proven that we are failing to be responsible for the rights our freedoms grant us. Matthew continued on with the lengthy and heartfelt post, adding, The true call to action is now for every American to take a longer and deeper look in the mirror and ask ourselves, what is it that we are truly valued? How do we repair the problem? What small sacrifices can we individually take today to preserve a healthier and safer nation, state, and neighborhood tomorrow? We cannot exhale once again. Make excuses and accept these tragic realities 
as the status quo. The Dallas Buyers Club actor explained that he just wants everyone to find a, quote, common ground to overcome this tragedy. Penning, as Americans, Texans, mothers, and fathers, it's time we reevaluate and renegotiate our wants from our needs. We have to rearrange our values and find a common ground above this devastating American reality that has tragically become our children's issue. He added that he believes the shooting was part of a larger epidemic, but one we can control. Writing, this is an epidemic we can control, and whichever side of the aisle we stand on, we all know we can do better. We must do better. Action must be taken so that no parent has to experience the parents being involved and the others before them have endured. Matthew concluded by sharing that he will continue praying for all the families who lost their loved ones. Penning, and to those who dropped off their loved ones today, not knowing it was goodbye, no words can comprehend or heal your loss. But if your prayers can provide comfort, we will keep them coming. The Oscar-winning movie star was born near Uval, where he spent the first 16 years of his life. He returned to the town in 2020 for the centennial celebration of the Uvald Area Chamber of Commerce and brought his mother, Kay, and brother, Brewster. Matthew's mom was a kindergarten teacher at St. Philip's Episcopal School, where the interstellar actor also attended. The private school is just a few minutes down the road from Rob Elementary School, where the mass shooting occurred on Tuesday. Things that, that I admire about you is you keep talking about what I call equity, just decency, fairness, treating people with respect. John Lewis used to say, the vote is the most powerful non-violent tool you have. Use the power to change for the change you want by voting. Look, I'm a lot older than you to state the obvious. When I was in high school, what happened was we had the civil rights movement would just be started. And what happened? Along came Bull Connor and his dogs. He thought he was going to drive a wooden stake into the heart of the civil rights movement. But when all those folks who never realized, never saw before what was happening in the South. They lived in places where there were very few black people, didn't know any black people. All of a sudden, they saw Bull Connor with dogs ripping off the clothes of black women, elderly women going to church, and kids being knocked down with fire hoses and their skin being ripped off. All of a sudden, as Dr. King said, we had the second emancipation. We had the Voting Rights Act and we had the Civil Rights Act. It changed things because people said, oh, my God, that's happening. I think I heard you say somewhere along the line what I've been saying. This cell phone has changed America. Because what happens now? We're at a point where some brave kid, 15 years old, can stand there and for for a total of 8 minutes and 46 seconds take a photograph of a black man whose family I know and met with and understand and spent time with and watched him brutally murdered. Brutally murdered. And people around the world were saying, my God, it really happens? Because I'm not in a neighborhood like that. I don't come from a place. And now, guess what? They're demanding change. Like people, we're not asking for sympathy. We're not asking for charity. We are just asking for equality. That's we it. are asking fairness, and we are asking for justice. That is all. I feel like um, everything, everything that people are asking for is getting interpreted in a very different way no it's simple we just want justice that's all we want justice we want to feel like americans we want equality treat me with respect yes with respect respect that's where i think you're seeing a real to look i have a friend who is a congressman in mississippi benny thompson a very well-known congressman african-american he called me two weeks ago he said joe joe I just came from a, 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 a protest in Mississippi. He said, and I looked out there, and there was now I forget how many people. He said there was many there was many white kids marching as black kids. This is Mississippi, Joe. Things are changing, Joe. The reason I'm so optimistic is because of your generation. You're the smartest, the best educated, the least prejudiced, and the most engaged generation in American history. And you're gonna change things. You're gonna change them. You're the reason I have such incredible hope. I really mean it. I'm not being trying to be nice. It's a fact. That's what's going to change things. The rest of the world's always looked to us. Why have they looked to us? Not because we're so powerful, 
with the power of our example. All right. So, yeah, it's a lot to take in. Jay Dwayne, man, good to see you. Glad you made it, man. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> I had to say the best for last, and it was primarily in my mind. Who are you talking to, bro? Why is that interview even possible? And who is Cardi B to speak for me? Uh yeah, I want a little bit more than just justice and fairness and whatever else was said in that statement. But it's easy to go get somebody you can just talk through and not to because they have no real responses, nothing to say. And that's not to demean her, but you're an entertainer. But not even um, just an entertainer. Don't don't gloss over the fact she's not a yes, black yes. American. We can go there too. Um, but it, and she yeah. said, we, she's, but I, I, I just, for it. She's for it. yeah, I, I love the passion. We're going, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, she, she anyway, said, she spoke for all black it. folks. And, and he was just happy to hear that, you know. I mean, where's the pushback to say, hey, your friend called you the other day to say that people were marching in Mississippi? Weren't they marching 40, 50 years ago in Mississippi? Dang, come on, man. I mean, there's no pushback. There's just this, this gleeful joy to feel like you in the club. Um, the first clip, uh, for a little bit more context, uh, football coach who said some things in regards to the protest that took, uh, place in, in the, the shadow of, uh, the, the, the murder of George Floyd and, you know, his, Hey, you know, we ain't talking about that, but we're going to talk about this little dust up at the Capitol. It was the dust up part of the comment that, that garnered a lot of, uh, negative attention, but he's a football coach. I, you know, let them, you know, come on, man. This social media, Twitter stuff, just getting everybody in some stuff, man. Just just go coach football, bro. Um, the stuff that took place at the BET Music Awards, um, you can pledge, Lizzo pledged a million dollars to Planned Parenthood. You're the same person who was twerk dancing, telling black men to go vote, and we were the cause of any uh consternation around democrats winning the election but there's no conversation at the bt awards that centers black american plight especially in terms of an argument for reparations from that from that perspective from that dynamic um celebrities just get to talk about stuff but there's no meat behind it and I say all of this lastly, because the last clip that uh, 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 is in the point of this conversation, Matthew McConaughey, he's from that area that's close context. But that is not the first place that a mass shooting takes place, uh, took place, has taken place in, involving children. Um, yeah, there's more to talk about there, but I want to preface everything with this. I understand my question with the complete and total understanding of the value of celebrity especially when it comes at a time such as the civil rights movement, when you have Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, when you have Jim Brown, Bill Ruff, you have uh, the cachet that's being used to move the needle for our society. I don't know if this is even remotely the same thing. Um, and that's, that's some of my reason for the frame of this question. So keeping that in mind, understanding that I have that up here, I understand that there's value at certain points and measures. But we've reached a point where fame and fortune just give that worth and validation without the real work, without the real skin in the game. I'll leave that there. Um, you guys have just seen <laughs> some clips that you can. At least I see you chomping at the bit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with Lisa. Then I'm going to go to Jay because, Jay, glad to have you back in the space. I know you've been uh, busy uh, doing some some awesome things down your way. And we had to talk about that uh all fair because I, I hate I missed it, but I'm sure you got some more stuff in the pipeline. So um we'll we'll figure that out when schedules permit. But uh Lisa, why does fame and fortune equal worth and validation? And feel free to apply that that process to <laughs> the Cardi B clip, which I feel like that's what you're gonna start with. 
I am going to start with it because the reason I'm going to start with it is because I take offense and it outright pisses me off when people choose to align themselves with blackness when it's convenient. Cardi B uh, it is Hispanic. Okay. And even though her mother is half African, she does not even present like that she got any black. She presents like she's all Hispanic. Okay. But she was not, re she, her family was not part of this American thing. And aside from that, she is a celebrity. And it, it just is offensive to be, to conveniently align yourself because I can't whitewash any of my blackness off at all. So when I walk in a room, I, oh, she black. Not, oh, I wonder if she's Hispanic. I wonder if she got some black in her, whatever. She black. So that's the first part that's upsetting. So the thing about celebrity and fame and all that stuff, um, I do uh, disagree with your statement about the man and coaching because it brought back to mind what Trump said about Kaepernick, right? Um, and the other athletes, that they ought to just be athletes. I think every individual you know, has a perspective, but we do have to be mindful of the impact when we have these larger stages as to what we say. I think he's in, I think that, that uh, coach was very insensitive to compare the two, number one, and he's coming from a, a, a place of privilege talking about the us's. <laughs> um, now with, with me contrasting what you said about um, him just going and coaching um, I do think white America and especially white male Americans, they should be muffling their responses and reactions to things because it is way more powerful because they've had the run of everything for so long. And then when, even if they have some sensitivity about them, it's not going to come across when you've been the elitist. So you can't, no, we can't be us yet. Because, you know, the, the equity pieces are not there. So then to get to my girl, Taraji, I love her. Um, and I, I I get what you're saying about the, the symbolic gestures, right? Um, and them investing. Um, it matters that there is a financial investment. I think that being a celebrity, you should not have be more valuable, or be considered more valuable and what you have to say should not matter more. But in this Western culture, right, it does. But in that vein, um, um, I think they should use their platform to what you were saying, like Cassius Clay and company did back then, like Malcolm X after an awakening, what they did back then to um, focus on the movement. And it doesn't seem like those things that they're doing are movement focused. So I get what you're saying about that, but we've got a whole culture shift in order to um, make sure people start valuing um, the what what should be valuable, humans, and and not you're in the spotlight and all this. And I mean, I was distracted. I mean, I work hard. I'm up four or five o'clock in the morning to ten, eleven at night, and I don't have nails that are distracting, right? Uh, I don't get my hair done, and I ain't got a makeup team to make me look a certain way. Um, so I, I don't like those portions that distract, but I think that that the message is not happening. And man, I, you got me turned up over this this whole thing now. And I'm gonna, I, I so, appreciate it though. Oh yeah. So so I say, and when I said just coach, I don't mean it in that same way. I just mean like this Twitter thing that that I don't look at the world with rose colored glasses and expect there to be alignment on every issue, thought, thing that takes place. Um, a lot of times when someone is met with the type of uh, response that he was, um, they they resign themselves even more so to their point. That's just the, the way this thing goes. So I'm saying, yeah, just, just coach football, bro. Keep You know, it used to be a time you go to work, you didn't talk about politics and you didn't talk about uh, other stuff that, that might be a little bit polarizing. I'm not saying that we need to live in that world. That would go counterintuitive to what I do and what I purport to do. But you have to desire to be in the space not just show up, say something, then run, hide your hands, or to throw rocks and hide your hands. But yeah, uh, good observations, and I, th I don't know, it's, it, I, this is an honest ask, is Hispanic and Dominican, because I thought she was Dominican or something, I'm not sure. But anyway, same, I'll go, okay. Oh. 
I don't know. I'm sorry. And if that comes across as insensitive, I apologize immediately. Not not yesterday or tomorrow, but now. All right, um, Jay, what you got, man? First of all, I miss y'all too, man. <laughs> it felt like forever. <laughs> um, this is funny because this conversation actually does come up a lot um, in spaces, and I and and this is really a judgment issue, not necessarily a capacity issue. We tend to judge a person by what they do as if that lessens their ability to make an impact. <clears throat> and so in this case, I'm totally different. So Lisa, I hope you my sister after this, but <laughs> I love when anyone speaks out about injustices, regardless of their occupation, regardless of who they are. And um, you guys may not know, there has been a movement that started on TikTok with none passing blacks calling out social injustices and racism where they're like, oh, because I don't look black, you think you get a pass. And they like, no. And so um, I put a lot of people in those categories, whereas Cardi B has said several times that she's black. I think the, the perspective of what black is, um, we sometimes don't believe that it includes ethnicities, but black is a race and race can include ethnicities and she has identified with that several times and i think that when you become any level have any level of popularity and you obtain any level of wealth you do have a social and civic responsibility whether you accept it or not your voice matters who is funny how we do the black women but oprah was the one who was slaughtered for that because she talked bad about one hamburger joint and the whole company came because of her voice. So we do have a social and civic responsibility when we come to it. And I commend anyone who is using their platform to speak out against it. Right now, they got Beyonce under fire because they're saying what she know about working, what she know about um, quitting a job. But the truth of the matter is, can you still relate to it? Can you still relate to that? You know what it feels like to want to quit. And there are several stars who want to quit their stardom. So it's like, it seemed like we get into these struggle Olympics that become distractions. Well, you don't know about the real struggle or it's not this or it's not that. I don't care. As long as you bring an attention to an issue that needs some type of correcting. And I don't care who it is or what their credentials are, what their qualifications are. We don't have a right, in my opinion, to discredit anyone. I don't know what happened to my camera. Discredit anyone based on what their status may be in America if they're speaking out against things that is threatening the total humaneness of who we are. That's how I feel about it. First off, man, that's why I'm I'm glad we got the people on this that we do. I love the um the, the ideas that are espoused in the conversations that we have here. I'll say this, and Lisa, I will come back to you, so if you have thoughts, please just keep them and come on and get the rest of the people here. I'll say this, though, Jay. Um, some of it uh, resonates, and some of what she's saying is worth being heard, but when you choose that type of individual to be the one that has that level of proximity to the highest levels of government knowing that there are going to be certain deficiencies that exist in what she'll receive what she'll say and what takes place in that conversation without the, the capacity that we would hope she would possess to really have a robust uh dialogue with the president the president of the united states all of that becomes a catch-all for why we can be so critical I totally agree that people have the right to say, share, do whatever. And if they get to a certain stature and they have a certain platform, but that's where I argue myself for an investment in a better political representation and investment in highlighting um, certain people with certain abilities to, to, to take those positions. So just as a quick, for instance, Cardi could have took that thing and said, yeah, I'll be there. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it and have somebody with her that has all of the knowledge, 
all of the the skill set that can have a real back and forth that is truly representative of black america because the majority of us are not just saying we want justice and be be peaceful and whatever the heck else she was saying as a representative of black people which she was not not just based on her ethnicity but based on the fact that she don't seemingly know enough to know better than to say what she was saying so have your sidekick show up and take the reins and you just sit back there and say oh i'm here but this person is going to have a conversation with you that's a little bit more in tune um that's what i'll say you got a response before i move on oh i don't know what's going on with my <clears throat> camera but yeah i just i disagree with that whole mindset and i think that that sets us back as people when we sit there and just focus on who's credited to speak on my behalf and that's what happens a lot especially in the black community one minute we say credentials don't matter or education don't matter and then the next minute it does matter when it's presented in a certain way and to be honest we can't say what she said doesn't isn't relevant because it is and she did start going to school for political science she just didn't finish and that's really her passion so she's actually stepping outside of her comfort zone where people are saying shut up and make music. And she's actually going back to what her first love was, which was political science and getting back in that arena. And I just feel like sometimes I feel like it's a judgment call, not necessarily a call on really dealing with the issue. The issue is black people are still dealing with these same type of issues. And we're going to need different voices to say it because the one thing you can say about Trump, nobody didn't care about us black folks until the white woman was involved. Now, when the white women were saying he's horrible and he's this, stuff started moving all of a sudden. Wow, isn't that? And if we're going to talk about people riding our coattails, it ain't just the musicians and the politicians. It's anyone who can relate to a black experience. They will ride it until they get what they want. Whereas this particular person wasn't asking for the Hispanics to get rights. She specifically said the blacks. So I'm okay with somebody speaking out on my behalf because truth of the matter is a lot of black people are tired of yelling. I'm glad white people are showing up at marches because they, they the ones doing it. So they need to be the ones fighting it. I'm just saying that if they are helping in the cause, I don't care who voice is saying it, long as it's not going against me. Yes, there's more that we can add to it. And I think that that can open a door, which is a different conversation. But I'm not going to tell her to shut up when she could impact some change with what she said. That's all. I, I will never tell anyone to shut up. I will say that I would not consult a plumber about fixing my car. I will say that I would prefer if her sincerity is where it hopefully is. And I'm saying it could be there, Jay, that she implore or employ someone who actually has spent the last multitude of years looking at this stuff and actually has ways and measures to talk about it with another political person to get things actually done as opposed to just saying yeah and we won't and um yeah okay and if you watch that whole interview you'll i don't know how you'll feel about it but it's just like oh, I saw it before. yeah but it's easy for joe to just sit there and say she she say we want free health care we want free education he ain't saying nothing He's just sitting there and then she say and black people just want just want yeah, equity yeah yeah you that I, my friend and this that and the other so it, that's too easy bro and i i'm not saying that she don't have a point valid issue say whatever you can be black whatever but i'm saying if we want something real transformative and significant we gotta ask that these people that have that level of access bring people that actually know how to have conversations about certain things malcolm x said in 1950 something or yeah 50 something i think it was you know black folks the only group of people that they go consult uh musicians and entertainers about our plight come on bro we, we can't have it and um i'm i'm gonna I'm I'm move on but i'll come back to you i promise you so have you have your thoughts ready but i gotta get bob and uh, okay bob and Merrill. so i'll come to you bob first um the topic you already know what it is so boy I, you know i like when we get up against time because we got way more to say but uh why does fame and fortune equal uh, worth and validation and feel free to talk about it how you please reference the clips or whatever all uh, right you're wearing me out tonight um all of y'all are um the 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 fame and fortune thing first of all we're a culture that values money and values income 
And so anybody that's made it from an income perspective is thought to be a winner. And so we give them credit, we give them praise, we give them whatever, because in this culture, in this system of, of structure, making money is the preeminent objective and agenda. And even if it looks like you've made money, then you are elevated and you are put on a pedestal because that's the preeminent thing that's out there. Um, from a fame and perspective, uh, fa fame and, and we're, think about it. Even in preschool, we start playing and plays. We're showing off. We're elevated. The ones that get the, 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 the songs to sing as solos, the ones that get the big parts, they're elevated. They're the people that are, we are taught from the very early stages of our lives to perform and to win praise and win approval. And so I think that there's something in that that kind of embeds this. And we, we are taught. At least I was, at least I was. It's important to be popular. It's important to have friends. It's important to, to, and so, okay. And so you look as a little child at all of that. And what do you come away with? What do you come away with? And, and we have a self-confidence deficit in this country. If we had self-confidence, we would have less reason to be fawning over all of these popular people and, 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 and striving to be one of them and striving to emulate them and striving to, to look like them, wear the clothes they wear and all of that kind of stuff. If we had, if, if, if we were to build in our children, self-confidence and a sense of self-worth for who we are, then a lot of this other stuff would, would, would fall, fall to the wayside. And lastly, and most importantly, if we had actual leadership that were being leaders, they would be the leaders, not the influencers, not the celebrities, not the these people and the those people, but the leaders would be the leaders. And in and the, and the clip of Joe Biden, what the fuck, pardon me, is he doing? What is he doing as president of the United States to address and deal with the things that need to be addressed and dealt with as opposed to having a, having a, conversation with some person about, oh, yeah, 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 we're on the same page. What the, what are you doing? What are you doing? What initiatives are you driving? What things are you in fact doing to address the root issues of equity and so forth and so forth and so forth? Nothing which gives her the voice, not him the voice, and he gets to sit there and go, we're good friends. I mean. Maybe we should have had you uh, accompany Cardi B. That's the whole point. Like, she can be there and she can say what she says. But we need we need somebody that's going to really have some engagement and challenge challenge those type situations, not be powder puff. And it's just that, that's that's a lot of the dynamic that I. Um, yeah. And, and, and the, place. the celebrities <laughs> are used to having attention. They're used to being able to say what they say. That football coach or whatever, whatever, if he were the coach of a, he has to be the coach of a winning. I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't know anything about the sports people, but he has to be a coach of a winning team, or he wouldn't have the freedom, quote unquote, to tweet what he tweets. He can only tweet what he tweets because he's got a winning team. He, he actually coaches on a sorry team. Well, <laughs> uh, watching it, but no, he just got the job. 
And there's a different dynamic at stake there that's interesting, uh, Bob. The the head coach, uh, Ron Rivera, a former NFL player, is considered a minority hire um, because he's, uh, I want to say, he's, uh, Latino descent some, some, somewhere, somehow. So he's the head coach. He's Mexican. Is it Mexican? Is that – so I'm terrible. Something gives that guy the sense that he no, can. No, he, but but what what? So that's an interesting one. I don't want to go too far down the road, and I got to get the mayor Bob. But yeah. fascinatingly enough, this guy has worked in a league that is seventy some percent Black American. Um, yet he's emboldened to have that type of observation, and then think his players are fine because if they could if they wanted to they could say something but dude uh you're the coach <laughs> who's gonna like challenge the coach that might cut them or go say hey we can't use you today or whatever it's a weird it's a weird observation and that's so something to unpack somebody but, uh, just needs to tell him he's full of shit <laughs> bob in rare form tonight all right man you gotta keep us on the air you know with <laughs> With the words. All right, Merrill, coming to you, man. Uh, you, you you got the, I'm sure, the gist That's of so everything after, after that, man. Look, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to get to not one of my questions. <laughs> Go ahead, Merrill. I was, I was going to push back and tell Bob that he, he he identifies as a white man, and there's there's an entitlement and privilege with that. You can do whatever the hell you want to um, without any repercussion uh, in most cases. So he's, 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 he's got that card. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is really interesting. So, like, I'm sitting there, like, I, I, I there are bits and pieces I agree with everything that people have said. Um, you know, I, what you said, Jay, like, I, I definitely want these folks. I'm not a shut up and dribble uh, proponent. So, I think everybody's lived experience has some value. I think everybody has some value. Um, I think the problem with the case where you're talking about the Joe Biden wanting to talk to Cardi B, if he the way that this works, right, is like there's a there's a there's an agreement. So it's like I'm going to bring you on this platform. Um, and if you try to disrupt and you want to bring on some expert and that's not what I'm trying to do, then we'll there's another one of you that'll do it. So I think that's what the issue is. So like there's there's no I, I, I have this conversation all the time. Like there is no the the black experience is so diverse and people have different perspectives there's no like one black community or like there's not a direction that folks going no, so no you, there's yeah there's not a monolith which we say right we don't want a monolith until we do uh and so like there's just no nobody can speak for an entire group of people uh but she, and so but like she that's chose but Mary, she chose to she yeah. chose to she and, chose and to I, at least at least she was presented that way and i think if people could just figure out a way to say speak in i statements and say my lived experience or the people i'm around this is what we're experiencing and then acknowledge there are other perspectives i think that's the thing if you could remind people in these public forums like here's my perspective and the people that i'm around this is how this set of black folks operate uh new york is a different type of place so you know dominicans folks who are puerto rican they experience the black experience and you know there's a there's a lot of connecting tissue in the Bronx and Queens. And so like, you know, that's always kind of murky. You know, there's some, there's some rappers who, you know, use the N word and stuff. I'm like, well, I don't know about that one. Um, so like that, that's interesting. Um, I agree with you, Bob. I, mean, I, think the you that, Mario, I want to yeah, make sure I get this part out there. Just not the challenge, but even if that's the case, they say you can't, this is the way we hit this interview has to take place. Cardi B's the, the get, she's the get. So she can just publicize that. Hey, I wanted to do this interview. They told me I couldn't bring such and such with me. She like, could. She's she could. She may. She may limit her opportunities for other stuff. And like Bob said, if your values are on capital and capitalism and stuff, you're not going to disrupt that golden goose. So like, she's not going to disrupt that way. And even if she does, they were like, okay, well, there's another one of y'all. There's always another one. You know, I, I, I'm sure there's somebody else that you can find. And, it, and it's just there's always going to be one. Like, cause we don't we don't have any alignment. Um, and then I get, then I, then I hear I go with we. So, I mean, I don't even know who we and us is sometimes. Sorry um, about that. I didn't want to derail your thoughts, but go ahead. Yeah. Continue. No, but I mean, but it, I, yeah, it, it's all connected to the same thing. I mean, I think even 
with, uh, you know, leaders in the past. I mean, like, you know, Martin Luther King did some wonderful things. Um, one of those things, too, that, you know, that that could be a criticism is like there was a, like an adherence to celebrity in, you know, his work. Um, we, we tend to deify him uh, as, um, as something next to God. Uh, he's on church fans. It's weird. Um, uh, you know, because, I mean, you know, from some stories you may hear, he, he you know, Dr. King's a wild boy. Um, the, you know, and, you know, Malcolm X had some stuff going. I mean, everybody's got like these things. Um, and I wish there was a way for some, if there was one or two celebrities that could do what you're talking about, Felton, bring along somebody um, to like, you know, to, uh, uh, to, to lens a different perspective or like one that's a little bit more informed. But at the very least, if these folks who speak out about stuff, if it's LeBron James, if it's Taraji P. Henson, if they could just stick to this is my perspective and the people I'm around and just acknowledge that there's not a monolithic thing going on and we all don't think the same, have the same interests, I think we, we'd be better off. Celebrities have a lot of power because just in general, organized people can be just as powerful as organized money. Um, so like, that's another part where, you know, like, I don't, I don't know, Jay, if they have a inherent duty to, to be social justice champions or to speak out, but they do have that opportunity from like having all these people that follow them because people just have these really tough lives. And like, and if a basketball player or a singer or athlete, like elicits something that makes you feel something and people follow and listen to them, that's that's powerful. So yeah, no, this is really, really good conversation. The one other point that I did want to say, I can't remember who was kind of talking about it, but like one of the things that is a kind of a thing with celebrity is like this non discriminate, just like randomly inviting people to the cookout stuff. It's such a low bar, <laughs> you know, it's like, if you know, like the, the classic thing is like, if there's like somebody who is not black, uh, particularly if the person is white and like they can dance or like there's something or like they or or you know George Bush gave uh, Michelle Obama you know a piece of candy and then all of a sudden like you know he's like he he's gonna be on a church man he really so. does like black people not <laughs> he really yeah he was, he, was, he was evil he was the boogeyman <laughs> for a long time and it's like he did this one thing like oh you you can come to the cookout now you yeah. know like so that, that that's, that's just kind of weird so um, yeah I just but I, I think the big thing is like the I think the, the headline is like. Lived experience is important. Like anybody's perspective is important. It's a data point, but it's not the data point. And we just we, we just got to get get to that space. See, I have a, a somewhat counter to that that energy because I think that's what allows for reconstruction to fail. Because we say, hey, you know, those Confederates who just tore the country apart, you know, they got a point perspective. We need to get them back in this government, <laughs> and then we, you know. That somebody got to pay the cost for that. So sometimes I don't think people have any point of perspective. I think sometimes people just really need to not be engaged in whatever's uh, important to the whole. And I agree with uh, the lack of us being a monolith, but I don't need it to just be all black folks. That's why John Brown, if you're a person that is a mind towards justice, a mind towards fairness, a mind towards understanding that a certain thing happened to a group of people and you need to be in favor of that being addressed and, and being uh, taken care of and, and, and revisited in the way that it, it did not uh, get taken care of and, and, and all the wonderful things that should have took place many years ago, black, white, blue, green, yellow, purple, whatever, then I'm cool with you. I don't, you don't have to just be black. Um, but to, to every, you know, this, this this whole energy around celebrities uh, amplifying their their thoughts and what just sharing and getting all the attention and that validation that oh he's saying something. There was one other clip I wanted to play, and it was uh, Draymond Green had called uh, another. Kendrick Perkins. Kendrick yes. Perkins. Yes, I love um, it. Called him a coon. Yes. Um, but now he's apologized. But his apology has all of this energy around him not necessarily knowing that the word was meaning that because where you come from, it just means like you're a clown. But he had spent 45 minutes on the phone with Andrews, uh, with the, the Silver, whatever the commissioner's name is of the NBA. 
Adam Silver. Adam Silver. You mean to tell me you have to have this full-throated apology about using the word coon? But y'all, this N-word just out of hand, and you don't got no opinion on that. And Silver has nothing to say to you about the N-word. So that's where I'm at with the just ridiculousness of celebrity, the lack of accountability and responsibility when it should matter, the stepping away from certain things, but leaning into others when somebody tells you that that's something you should pay attention to. But you, how do we not have a conversation about the N-word at this point? by any measure when we know it's rampant in all sports all parts of our entertainment culture and not one can say anything about it but you can make sure that you apologize for using the word cool see those well, type of things bother me to, man Go ahead. to be fair though i don't think the nba would be comfortable with an nba player being recording like in a public setting using n-word i i'd never well, i hadn't heard that it happens. You hear it on the basketball court when the mic catches it. You hear oh, it. yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, you can't you can't do an interview and use that word. So you can't. Yeah, I'm not saying you can or can't. It was rappers at some NBA players that rap also. They do it. Um, former players, if whether it's Matt Barnes or Steven, whatever the, the show they have, they own oh, they do it. it is. So it, yeah. all I'm saying is it's not even a conversation. But right. you come out and you make sure that you correct yourself on saying cool. Come on, bro. Yeah. We got other, we got bigger fish to fry. We're not frying them. I'm sorry to do that part right there. We're gonna go around the space. I didn't get any of my questions. It looks like we're gonna have a part two. So can I get a promissory note from everybody here that we come back next? Promissory week? note. So yeah, man, I got to have it. I need a guarantee, Jay. I need a guarantee because yeah, you got one. Yeah. All right, man. So I'm gonna three we're, copies. We're, I'm sorry. <laughs> you need three copies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, in fact, no, I need the one. I need the one that copies everything with the little slip in between, so you can just right. tear it off. Triplicate, um, triplicate. Um, yeah, triplicate. So the pink, yellow, I, and white copies. There you go. And I'm I'm going back around the space for final thoughts, but I didn't okay. even get to any of my questions. I really didn't, and I I have one in particular that I wanted to really ask, but we we get right around time, and I kind of knew that was going to happen because I think this is a really good topic. I think we need to hear more of this conversation, um, in the media instead of just finding an, another former celebrity to take a media job we need regular people to have these type of conversations man well um, i was uh, going to say ahead, Jay, you, i'll start with you final thought you. Just look i feel like i feel like my sister that. lisa this yeah. one got me hot let me yeah. stop <laughs> i'm going i was going to lisa you, know, you, got, you got yourself on mic go ahead bro go ahead well no this is like um the reason why this is important to me because i do live in this space with my organization and this is really a value concern like um, you and Lisa look at things from a different lens because you are in the trenches. You just was doing a political thing. And so how you're looking at things is totally different than how Jay will look at them. And so when we talk about lived experiences, I don't know if it's necessarily just that or the things that we value, because what's important to you two may not be important to me. Even as a black man, I'm like, I get it, but it's other things that are just as important to me that I get like animated about. And I think when we get into these spaces, it's just a value assessment of like, am I mad at what she said? Or I just don't think she need to be the one saying it. <laughs> you know, and that happens a lot. It's just like with Lizzo, it's like, am I mad that she naked? Or I really just feel like fat people don't need to be naked. It's like, it's one of those things that we need to think about when we have it. And let's be honest, in our culture, for the most part, People don't like to help us until we don't need their help no more. What do I mean by that? They don't want to help you and support you until you become a celebrity. Now everybody's buying your album when you don't, you already got millions, don't need it no more. And now you want to help me and tell me that I'm on to something. But what about the Lisa's in the community, the Felton's in the community right now when they need your vote, they need your word, they need that. And I think that that's where sometimes it happens because I see a lot of unqualified individuals speaking on stuff <clears throat> in the DI, DEI movement <clears throat> causing more damage, but they don't call on Jay right now because that would disrupt some things and it's easier for them to keep that person to validate those ignorances. And those people are getting buku money. So I know that, but you I know just, what it is. You just put the exclamation point on my point, Jay. It yeah. called Jay for that. Don't call Cardi for it. That's all I'm saying. But here's the thing, though. Here's the flip side. 
when people do damage like <clears throat> some larger organizations, they do call Jay to fix it. So Jay gets even more. So it's almost like a win. Like, OK, choose that sometimes and then come to the person that's really going to fix it. But I think that those experiences, even what is perceived as ignorant experiences, also add to the diversity spectrum because it brings home another point that is needed later because it's happening. It happens in so many areas, just like y'all passionate about the fame people. I'm passionate about some other areas they're doing the same thing in. And I feel like mm, this makes me more angry. So I do think it's where your value is placed is what irritates you more. And I think for me, I am in the creative space, you know, I act, sing and all of that. So I'm a little bit more sensitive to that because I'm like, well, what if I become a famous actor? But there are other things that I'm equally passionate about that I feel need to be more strongly regulated. And that's what I was trying to say. Like, and I think that we are irresponsible with our fame sometimes. And I'm talking about all of us like Felton, because I respect you. There are certain things me I don't put a whole expectation on you that you may not know about. So if I see you out in Greensboro and you do something, it might disappoint me, but you ain't signed up for it. But why? Because you established a presence in my life and you may be like, Jay, I ain't signed up for it, but that's how you presented yourself to me. And I think that we got to kind of play that balance. Like, is it my value and my expectation or is it really the situation at hand? That's what I was, that was what I was saying. No, I get, I get all, I get a, a large majority of what you um communicating there and, for time's sake, I'm going to just say we'll we'll continue to, to, to travel around the room. But yeah, real, I, I get I get the the dynamics that you're presenting in that in that part of the conversation. And yeah, we do have a propensity to put people on pedestals, which is highly dangerous and can really blow up in your face um, when you see the person that they may be hiding. Fortunately for me, Jay, I'm pretty consistent, bro. Yeah, me and Meryl argue about the pedestal he on. That joker don't be wanting to be on it. <laughs> there you go. Don't that's believe that's, in it. That's, that's he believe jump off of it every time and somebody else put him don't on it. Don't believe in it. All right, Lisa, I'm, I'm going to come to you next. Get I ain't, to you. I ain't, I ain't about the MLK cool. stuff. Yeah. Um, well, first, Jay, uh, Jay I, I love you. And and I'm open. Bruh, I'm open. Um, I, I think, not I think, I know I'm the most passionate because the people who um, are running media, people who are owning the things will cherry pick the individuals that are not subject matter experts and, and, and cause some things to fail when they could have chose subject matter experts. So that's why I'm more passionate and everybody has a voice, everybody has a place. But when certain people are out there, the people who control everything will pick them up um, in order to hold that movement back. But I respect you and love you, bro. Um, thank you again, Felton. Yes, a fabulous show. And to your uh, your last point, my final statement, um, yes, you can still have a win. Um, when I ran for office, it was because I had a perspective. I, I'm a subject matter expert on poverty. Been there, visited, tried to run through it, drove down the highway, got out of it, fell back in it, yada, yada, yada. So I wanted to represent um, the experiences that I had for this district who was entrenched in that issue. But I didn't get the seat. But the win is that I have been engaged with the person who got the seat. And he came and said, hey, I see you a subject matter expert on this, on that. So that win came and I was still able to have a positive impact just because um, of that of that run. So um, everybody has a voice, but sometimes you need to divert um, and give space for subject matter experts. I hear you. Yeah, that's perfect. Well said, Lisa. I think that's my energy. That's just the soul energy, man. I know you don't consult this person about something they don't know nothing about. You go get the person that knows more about it and hope that they're being authentic and telling you the truth about whatever you're trying to address. And I hate to be vague, but I'm coming to you next, Bob. Uh, don't make me push the, the beat button. I forget what is it. <laughs> the, the one that blanks out the cuss words, but um, just take, give us your final thoughts and get us out of here. I apologize if I offended anybody. I thought this was grown folks business. And so I took some liberties, there but you go. Um, I, I, Lisa and Jay Dwayne particularly have, 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 have said some really, valuable things tonight and um the the thing is our culture again it 
it lets voices Shanghai um, perspectives and thoughts. And and it, uh, Lisa's comment about, okay, a person of color now is an African-American or black American. Well, no, they're not. Um, they're, they, they, the, um, um, there's all this nuance and there's all this ignorance around that nuance. And there's all this leveraging of that nuance that is detrimental to what we're trying, what we need and have to accomplish. And, and it's true with other things too. It's true with, with, a, 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 an easy target is Christianity, where the evangelical, conservative, radical, hateful Christians have Shanghai Christian to be this hateful, controlling, negative thing that's the righteousness of the United States. It's, 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 it's all mixed up in the same thing. And so until we have... I think until we have real leadership that stands above all that and calls it all out, not the Joe Bidens, not the Barack Obamas. I mean, I voted for Barack twice. I'm, I'm glad he was president. He did not take the opportunity to do what he could do, in my opinion. And the Donald Trump to your to the whole topic of this conversation, he's perceived to be rich. Therefore, he has. Oh, look at him! He's a celebrity. Oh, look at him! And so he's winning on all these fronts for all these disenfranchised people, and he's despicable. And yet we give him passage because he is apparently wealthy and he's a celebrity. And so he must be doing things right. Yeah, that, that entertainment part. Um, so, man, overtime is nice. I, I, I definitely, I love it. So, um, man, I can't wait for next week. <laughs> I cannot wait. Meryl, uh, take us out of here with the, with your final thoughts and, uh, you know, don't hold back. Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be really quick to, to, to Jay's point about like this, the deeper conversation. I would love to have a conversation about, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and kind of like the, the, uh, corporatization of it and the monetization. Um, I'm sitting here thinking about uh, a couple of folks in, in, uh, Dina Hayes, uh, in, in Greensboro and, uh, Tracy Green, Washington might just be really good people to have on our show to talk a little bit about like some like what they're seeing and just, and then the other folks that are doing this at a grassroots level. So I, I think that would be really good. Um, so I will, if we do that, I will work hard to try to get both of them on here. Um, but, uh, I, the, the, the thing that's not lost for me is this, uh, is the getting back to Cardi B symbolism, uh, symbolism tends to be individual or onesie twosie instead of collective and as long as symbolism is like impressive and moves the needle um there's no incentive for a joe biden or any other institution to to be to change the way that they you know bring in folks to represent a whole group of people um there's no incentive um until folks are collective uh have have some collective power to like change the people who are running the systems it's just it's just a show and if we're easily impressed or think that there's been a lot of change made because uh, somebody's the first black person to do this in a long time or the youngest black person to do this and it's, it's one person has nothing to do with any type of system change, as long as that's important and that's impressive and that's the headline of magazine X, um, people will exploit that. Yeah, that, there's a wonderful uh, old clip I, and I'm, thinking it was uh Muhammad Ali and and uh Dr. Martin Luther King they come out of a space and somebody asked them what they were talking about or something and they kind of say that's between us you know that that dynamic existed in the way that you're saying it without it having to be 
a lot of people the person in leadership and the person that garnered the attention collaborated for better outcomes but one elevated the other we've replaced that that person that that had the higher uh bandwidth of dealing with the, the societal ills with the person who has the capacity to uplift them and just said hey here's some more attention for you here's some more power and potential uh, uh financial gains for you that's the that's the rub and you know lastly because i'm not going to keep it oh felt it i just i just want to make sure I, I awkwardly worded like i didn't want to say dina and tracy were guilty of that thing that i was saying about Dina. yeah i was kind of like yeah that's not what i meant yeah, yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mean that i said careful, they're just be careful there's just been deeper drop. conversations about like making it yeah. more impactful yeah. and organizations use di in the wrong way yeah yeah i think uh, it's not I think a sequence you, i didn't mean that part no i, I, I get it and i think it was i think communicated properly but when your name dropped you gotta be careful that's the only thing about it and you don't want to of context but yeah there's some good yeah, i just want to make sure that was yeah. clear i don't want anybody thinking i was saying that they're guilty of that i yeah, think that yeah. they are they are uh in the forefront of talking about how corporate entities institutions colleges use the stuff that they do in the wrong way yeah yeah I, I, I agree there's there's exploitation on a multitude of levels and i think that's where my final thought was going in terms of just um the ideas and energies that goes into people uh becoming those individuals who benefit from the continual despair of, of black americans so they show up when a travesty happens but they don't have much to say in the peace times um that's that's what we got we got to have people that always got something to say because there's always something to be said for black flight in america i'll leave that there Thanks for uh, hanging around, you guys, for the overtime that we've uh, now embarked them upon. We, this has been a while since we went this far over, but I appreciate you guys having the energy. We'll continue the conversation next week because, again, I didn't even get to some of the questions. And uh, I'm, it's relatively easy to, to find clips of celebrities talking about stuff that they may not know enough to talk about. That's all I'm saying. No more. All right. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful night. And I uh, appreciate you guys as always. See you next week. Thanks, Diane. Great job. Take care, everybody.